Hello everyone and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College at the Sedona campus and would like to thank our sponsors Northern Arizona Healthcare. And joining me now are our two filmmakers Jeff and Pete from the film. Good morning. Well, what's your film? To be safe. <laughs> to be safe. That's what you were to leading to it. Yeah, yeah. I got it. It was a dot, dot, dot situation. It was a beautiful cue. Like, she teed it up for you and you swung and missed. And I was like, hey, I don't know what's happening yeah. right now. It's called To Be Saved. It's a short film. A yeah. drama. I think maybe we should just have another interview and forget this one. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have one where we just like sit around and tell jokes for about 10 exactly. minutes. Exactly. Like, we all need a little levity in life. Uh... <laughs> But this, yeah, the start to the conversation seems very happy. The it's film perfect. itself is yeah. very heavy. Yeah. 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 So um, this is not your first go round in Sedona. No. Uh, and I'm, you came back. I came back. Um, yeah, I was here last year. Uh, very different weather. It was 110 degrees every day. <laughs> uh, I was here with a short called uh, The Forgotten Place, um, which is, if you were here last year, it was about a man who interviews another man to potentially be his best friend. So it's... Um, Light and funny and poignant, and fortunately, uh, yeah, we, we won Director's Choice and we won the Audience Film Awards. So I had this film that I'd sh we had shot a few years ago, and because it was so heavy, I just I felt strange putting it out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, hats off to Sedona for making filmmakers not only feel appreciated and seen, but also loved, to be honest. And so I, I, I felt safe, and I thought, I'm gonna give another shot, mainly because I wanted to come back. Because <laughs> the food is great, and the people are lovely, <laughs> great, and yeah. and also the audiences are, you know, really, they love filmmakers. They come around, they want to meet us, they want to hear our stories, and they'll they'll show up and support, and they ask really great in depth questions that make us feel like, make us feel seen, but also make us feel like the the, the art that we're creating is being seen and appreciated. So I, I couldn't, I was so happy I got in again just to come back. Yeah, well, I think you might be coming back again because apparently you turned into like a PR person and setting up interviews for other filmmakers. <laughs> yeah. I've been like, hey, did you get an interview? You should get one. I, I sometimes forget it's a... Uh, You're not part of the Jeff Locker machine? <laughs> I actually somebody was asked, but I'm actually a finalist in the um, in the screenplay competition, and I didn't even remember that until another filmmaker was like, "Congratulations!" I was like, "On what?" <laughs> so I, I want to be part of the Sedona family for for years to come. So yeah, I just have I to keep so. working. I mean, yeah. Steve might be giving him a run for the money. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know, so he may have to fight you on that one, yeah. but it seems like you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I'm even, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with this film because it means a lot to me, and, and, and Pete's like my brother, I've known him for 12 years, he's one of my first friends in LA when I moved there, and so I was really excited to get in just to call him and say like, hey, do you want to go to Sedona, and yeah. we, we've got a film and we're going to talk about it, so. Awesome, well tell us a little bit about the film. Um, it's uh, so it's a story of a of a man who um, checks himself out of the hospital after an unsuccessful suicide attempt, um, and he returns home, which is where he tried, only to find his brother there, um, and his brother is the person that not only found him but saved him, and the two have their first ever real heart to heart talk about this character that I play, his um, his lifelong struggle with with mental illness and, and especially depression, and he finally explains to him that he's been suffering from uh, treatment-resistant depression, which basically means a third of people who um, suffer from depression are treatment-resistant to basically all of the medi medications. So I'm a big fan of antidepressants, but there are, you know, there are about 100 million people around the world, there's no pill for them, and no amount of yoga is, is going to cure them, So, but you wouldn't know it from people walking around. So. It was a, an important topic, and, and both of us have been through stuff in life, and, and it's an honest conversation about about mental illness and what happens when you, what happens when someone decides that they don't want to be saved and they that they're done, and it's an it's an honest look at, at that. Mm -hmm. And Pete, you were the actor in the film. Uh, yes, the I played opposite Jeff, uh, and it was very. It was the the culmination of the film was so interesting because. Jeff wrote, we were in an acting class together, yeah. and I had lost my brother right before. Uh, I had no idea that Jeff was dealing uh, with depression because he kept it very uh, close to his heart. Mm. Uh, and he said, hey, I found this scene. Will you do it with me in class? And I said, yeah, of course. And we did this scene, and it was, we were in puddles on the floor. We had broke down just crying, and just, it was just all the feels. And I was, I was eventually I was like, Jeff, I need to know this play. Where did you get it? And he said, well, 
I don't want to tell anybody, but I wrote it. I was I was writing, I was writing secretly, and and giving scenes to people in my class, saying I found this. I think it'd be really good for you. And then just you know, partly imposter syndrome, but partly just. I wanted to experiment on <laughs> people in my class. <laughs> and even though P I knew Pete and loved Pete and trusted Pete, I it was so sensitive. And we were known as the comedy guys. So I think the class, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had. The, it the stands first out to time this day, we yeah. ever read it, and we were crying. The whole class was crying. Nobody had seen either one of us work like that before. Yeah. The teacher was crying, and, and people were coming up saying, like, can I get the whole play? Because I need to know if he makes it or not. And I said... I found it. I don't know what happens to him. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was it was a really significant yeah. and, and potent artistic experience, especially for two funny dudes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then even you know on the set that day, just to put yourself in that place, you know, it's yeah. one thing to present it in a class, but now we're making something for the for the world to see. Or, yeah. uh, and so uh, you know, to put yourself in that place and to make yourself that vulnerable, uh, it was just a true. It's it's the acting experience that every actor yeah. longs for. Yeah. Well, and we do have a clip of the film yes. that we'd like to see. Yeah. This okay. is, uh, I'll, I'll set it up. This is, uh, he has, this, my character has just checked himself at the hospital where his brother was actually supposed to go and meet him. And they have their first, um, they start talking for the first time. Okay. So let's take a look. Who we'll cleaned the bathroom? Oh, I did, didn't. Dad hired a crew. Oh. You did a good job. Cleaner than it was before I bloodied the joint up. You really gonna... Do it again? Make a joke right now. I'm sorry, when is the best time to make a joke? I just don't think it's appropriate. To... So a guy with multiple personality disorder walks into a bar and five come out. You don't have multiple personality disorder. I know, it was a joke. What, I'm never allowed to make another joke again? I know, just not about, you know, what the, the whole slitting my wrist thing. Why do you have to be so bad at killing myself? I'm gonna take this outside, throw it in the garbage, and I'm gonna grab my suitcase from the car. Suitcase? Yeah. I'm gonna stay with you for a while, uh, you know, just until you're back on your feet, back to normal. Back to normal? Yeah, I'm gonna keep you company, man. You mean babysit me? I mean keep you company. You still don't get it, do you? Get yeah, what? Why I did it? You were having a tough time. A tough time? Yeah, things got rough. Uh, you know, you, you weren't thinking clearly. I wasn't thinking clearly. Yeah, you know, you got depressed and you made a mistake. And say. Yes, the doctor mistake. said you weren't taking your medication for like a <laughs> week. It wasn't a and mistake. It, just ha it wasn't a mistake, Vinny. Listen to me for once in your goddamn life. The only mistake I made is that I didn't succeed. It's funny. It it's really that. funny. You know what's funny is we're watching it and we're we're like hitting each other. And I like, know. Hey, they laughed at that. Yeah. We're so yeah. grateful when people laugh at like the one funny thing yeah. in there. The one thing I noticed is we traded hairdos eventually. I I I cleaned up. I I missed yeah. that look though. I was like I was kind of a studly. Yeah, I like a long hair. I mean, I was a complete mess at the time <laughs> and struggling like to get up every morning. But I was like, oh, that look, that's pretty. Yeah, that's you cleaned pretty, up pretty well. Pretty, yeah, <laughs> but it's. I think every time I, I, you know, we've seen it so many times just in editing, and and it's it's. It's one thing to watch it by myself, but to watch it with Pete sitting beside me and to watch other people watch, I think it just, it gets me every time. It really does. Uh, it sounds so narcissistic. I, I, was, I was sitting next to my wife at our screening last night, yeah. and I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, here it comes, and there's a tear coming down. <laughs> and, you know, and I think she knew even to like when to look at me, when to make sure yeah, I was okay. When to put the, I saw yeah, the hand yeah, on me. Yeah, because, it, you know, it... it Again, we put ourselves, we, we both had just gone through very hellish situations, yeah. and we put ourselves out there at the moment. And so I, every time I see it, it brings that right back up. And you know, it's interesting. I had known Pete for years, and I, I did not know, even before we shot this, I had never spoken to Pete directly about his brother. Right. And we had never talked about what I was going through either. And we just, we knew something. I think when we did it in class and we were both crying, I think that there was a, like, at some point in time, we're going to have to talk about this stuff. And we never really, I think last night at the Q&A was like, there was a moment where I was sharing something. Pete kind of looked at me like, yeah, you, I didn't know what you were going through. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I also think part of wanting to, 
to, to not put the film out there is because we just don't talk about mental illness the same way now that we did then. To say that you suffer, from, I wouldn't even admit that I had anxiety. I was having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell anybody because I was afraid that I would not work. I was afraid people would judge me. And bringing it out now, especially after this pandemic and everything we've been through, and this group trauma that we still don't understand, and we're going to be processing the difference between your experience and my experience and kids I teach and, and little kids. So I think that people are ready to talk about this stuff, at least from the Q&A last night and the questions and people, people wanting to share their own stories. I think we recognize that you know, invisible illness is a, is, is its whole other thing. And it's okay to start asking each other. We don't, and we don't necessarily have to know how to respond. You can well, just say like, are you, how are you doing? You okay? You said something really beautiful last night, uh, which was the, at the end of the film without giving away the end of the film, essentially it's implied that the character that he, Jeff's character is done. He gives up. He's yeah. no matter what happens, his life will be over. He's going to end his life. And uh, what Jeff said last night, which really got me, was uh, after everything we've been through the last few years, he's now more hopeful that this character goes on and lives. Right. That this character finds some sort of hope. And yeah. that's just, it's lovely that through this traumatic experience that we've all gone through, that, uh, that hope is the, the result. We have to. I mean, what, what are we going to do otherwise if right. we don't find hope? I, so I actually, I'm adapting this right now into, into a TV series. So... Five years ago, I would have told you, that's it. His life is over. And now I, I want him to live, not to judge anybody else and their choices that they make in their suffering. But I think that there's a second chapter. And I, I want to know that I have a second chapter and Pete has a second chapter. And hopefully, I think just the act of like starting to work on a series and what comes next and who are the people that are going to come in and check in on him and ask him the right questions that he was waiting for people to ask it's a, it's been very healing to to think that he makes it and 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 to explore what it was that made the difference for him when all the medications and the yoga and the meditation and the apps when none of that made a difference and in the end for him for this character it's he finally connected to somebody who saw him and saw his pain and that's we're all experienced all of our pain was different after this trip after this so even just coming to Sedona and getting to just laugh and be among people who have been through stuff and are mm -hmm. using their art to, to, to survive in any way, shape, or form. It's so healing. So I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to get to show it again five years later. That's amazing. And it sounds like that this, the whole entire process for you has been healing in so many yeah. different ways, just for you personally. Absolutely. I think for both, for for both, both of, of us. Every time yeah, we absolutely. watch it, we're just yeah. in different places in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then people will come up to us, and, and sometimes they just, you know, and sometimes that's all you need is yeah. just like, hey, man, I, I, I see you. I, I, I can't help you necessarily, but I do see you. And to be seen is, especially as an artist, mm -hmm. but for anybody, to be seen is, is one of the most healing things we can experience. So hopefully, it's not a happy film, <laughs> but hopefully you'll see a little bit of yourself or somebody you know who has struggled, and you, and you might have an empathy for that person and an understanding that uh, that you did not have before and yeah. and we're all going to get through this we can't get through this unless we get through it together right right and how can people find out about the film um you can find us on social media uh i'm just at jeff locker and i'm at pete capella uh so this uh, we i think we might have one more festival it's a very limited run and then hopefully we'll get it up on um, something like amazon prime or if you're a distributor and you would like to <laughs> Be part of this. We're we're filmmakers. Yeah, we're always Jeff Locker done. machine. Yeah, we're always I'm telling like, you. Yeah. Or or they'll say I want to buy the TV series and we're gonna wait till this series comes out. So we'll, well, we'll first see. First of all, you're in Sedona. Yeah. You just put the thought out there. We it's have one more vortex. screening. That's, That's right. Yeah. Literally, we are hiking to a oh, vortex today. Yeah. So we'll put it out there. But also, we do have one more screening left, which is probably what you were asking. Uh, we have one more screening tomorrow. We're in uh, Shorts Block 4, so it is showing tomorrow at 1 p.m. So if you get a chance, come out, um, ask questions. We're happy to, clearly, we're happy to talk about it, and, um, and, and we'll make some jokes along the way just to like, <laughs> ease, ease, ease you into it. Well, it's such a delight having both of you here at the festival back again and for the first time. For the first so, time. So, yeah, we look forward to having you come back again, right? Great. Thank, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for so having much. us. Yeah, and thank you for right. being such an uh, awesome community and a wonderful audience. Yeah, and if you need PR... 
<laughs> I'll get your film into Sedona and I'll set up your interview. Just watch my film and pat me on the back and ask me if I'm okay. That's all. I <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this. <laughs>